Hi everyone, and welcome back. In our overview video, we defined what it means for an infinite series to be equal to a finite number s. Specifically, we started by defining what are called the partial sums of the infinite series, s0, s1, s2, and so on. These are the numbers that you get by adding up just the first few terms from your series. So sn would be what you get by adding up the terms a0, a1, all the way up to an. Now, if those partial sums approach some finite real number s as n tends to infinity, we'll say that s is the value of our infinite series. We say that the infinite series converges to s. If instead the partial sums go off to infinity, minus infinity, or don't approach any finite value, then we'll simply say that the series diverges. In this video, we'll have the chance to use these definitions to analyze the convergence of a given series. Specifically, I'd like to begin by finding an expression for the nth partial sum of the series that we get by adding the terms 1 over k squared plus 3k plus 2 for k from 1 to infinity. Now this may seem like a bit of a daunting task. After all, how am I supposed to add up n terms of this form? Wouldn't that be an incredibly complicated expression? In general, yes, finding the partial sums explicitly can be a pretty difficult task. But in this case, there's a little trick. I'd like you to begin by finding the partial fraction decomposition of a general term in our series. You'll see that something magical happens and you will be able to compute the partial sums. Once we know these, the question becomes, does the series converge? If so, what's the sum of the series? According to the hint given in the question, it will be helpful to first find the partial fraction decomposition of a general term in our series before we compute the partial sums. So in order to find the partial fraction decomposition, I've started by factoring the denominator as k plus 1, k plus 2. We'd like to break this up as a constant a divided by k plus 1, plus a constant b divided by k plus 2. The question is, what are the values of a and b? Well, we can figure that out by multiplying both sides of this equation by the denominator that you see here. What we'll get is 1 is equal to a times the second factor, k plus 2, plus b times the first factor, k plus 1. By plugging in some carefully chosen values of k, we should be able to figure out the constants a and b. For instance, what happens when we plug in k equals minus 1? When we try this, our second factor, k plus 1, is going to disappear entirely, and our first factor, k plus 2, will be equal to 1. So we get 1 is equal to 1 times a, or in other words, a is equal to 1. Similarly, we can plug in k equals minus 2. That will kill off this first factor, k plus 2, and give us a value of minus 1 for our second factor. We have that 1 is equal to minus 1 times b, or equivalently, b is equal to minus 1. So there you go. We have our partial fraction decomposition. 1 over k squared plus 3k plus 2 should be equal to 1 over k plus 1 minus 1 over k plus 2. Now it may not yet be entirely obvious as to how this expression will help us to compute the partial sums, but let's just go with it. We'll use this decomposition, along with our definitions from the previous video, to compute the partial sums on the next slide. Okay, we're now ready to find the partial sums of our series. I'm going to start by computing the first few partial sums, s1, s2, s3, and then we'll move on to the general partial sum, sn. So let's begin by looking at s1. By definition, s1 is going to be the sum of the first one terms of our series. So really, it's not much of a sum at all. It's just our first term. We can get that first term by plugging in k equals 1 to the expression you see here. But I'm actually going to use the partial fraction decomposition that we found on the previous slide, because the hint given in the question suggested that maybe this decomposition would be helpful to us. So when I plug in k equals 1, I get 1 over 1 plus 1, minus 1 over 1 plus 2, that's going to give me 1 half minus a third. Now I could simplify this expression, but I'm actually going to leave it as is, and you'll see why momentarily. For now, we'll move on to S2. By definition, S2 is the sum of the first two terms in our series, and we get those terms by plugging in k equals 1 and k equals 2, respectively. My first term is 1 over 1 plus 1, minus 1 over 1 plus 2, and my second term is 1 over 2 plus 1 minus 1 over 2 plus 2. Here's where the magic happens. Notice that we have 1 over 1 plus 2 and 1 over 2 plus 1 with different signs. 
they're going to kill each other. Goodbye. All that we're left with is 1 over 2 minus 1 over 4. Ah, pretty cool. This partial sum cleaned up quite nicely. Will the same thing happen with S3? Well, let's see. The first term is 1 over 1 plus 1 minus 1 over 1 plus 2. The second term is 1 over 2 plus 1 minus 1 over 2 plus 2. And the third term is 1 over 3 plus 1 minus 1 over 3 plus 2. Sure enough, we get the same sort of cancellation. Here we have minus 1 third and plus 1 third. Here we have minus 1 quarter and plus 1 quarter. After all the terms in the middle die, we're just left with 1 over 2 minus 1 over 5. Oh, now I think you can start to see a pattern. You can probably even guess what the nth partial sum is going to be. But let's write it out just to be sure. My first term is 1 over 1 plus 1 minus 1 over 1 plus 2. My next term is 1 over 2 plus 1 minus 1 over 2 plus 2, and so on. My second last term is 1 over n minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 over n minus 1 plus 2. And my last term is 1 over n plus 1 minus 1 over n plus 2. Once again, we see the same sort of cancellation. My 1 over 3s cancel. My 1 over 4 is going to cancel with the next term. My 1 over n minus 1 plus 1 is going to cancel with the previous term. And here you can see that at the end, we have 1 over n plus 1 cancelling with 1 over n plus 1. All the terms in the middle collapse, and we're just left with 1 half minus 1 over n plus 2. And so there you have it. We have a nice compact expression for the nth partial sum of the series. Series like this, where the partial sums collapse in the middle, are called telescoping series. You can imagine an expandable telescope being collapsed into something very small. Let's see how we can analyze the convergence of this series based on the partial sums that we found. Once we've figured out the partial sums, deciding whether or not our series converges is usually pretty easy. We just need to apply the definition from our overview video. That is, we have to ask ourselves, do these partial sums approach some finite value as n tends to infinity? Well, in this case, it's pretty easy to see that they do. When n tends to infinity, these partial sums are going to approach a value of 1 half. So in this case, we can conclude that yes, the series does converge. Its sum is given by the limit of the partial sums, which in this case is 1 half. Now this is a nice example for getting you working with the definitions of partial sums and convergence for infinite series. But don't be fooled. In many cases, finding a nice simple expression for the nth partial sum of your series can be an incredibly difficult task. And even if you happen to know that the series that you're working with is convergent, finding the precise value of its sum can be challenging or downright infeasible. So in many problems, you're not going to be asked to find the precise sum of a series, but rather to decide whether or not the series is convergent. Starting in our next lesson and continuing over the next couple of weeks, we'll see lots of different tests for doing exactly this.